Chatterbait rods, part two. This one is just a few extra rods, I think four to be exact, maybe five, that were called out by you, our customers, uh, or people that are viewers that viewed the previous video, or employees that work here that said, hey, how come we didn't talk about this one, or, you know. I think we're gonna be doing probably a part three of this and part four, because it obviously looks like people fish with chatterbaits a lot. There's a lot of popular rods for it. Uh, I'm gonna start it off with this one because I personally think, and me and some of the employees that work here feel the same as I do, is this is probably one of the most sleeper chatterbait rods that we sell here at Omnia Fishing. This is by far and away the most inexpensive chatterbait rod I think we've talked about. I believe these are like 129 retail, somewhere in that ballpark, don't quote me. This is an extremely inexpensive rod. This is the Falcon Lowrider series. The more we touch these rods, the more impressed we are with them. The reason why we see why they're so popular. They've really been popular regionally for us and obviously around the Ozarks area, Oklahoma, North Texas, all that. But I now own a couple of them. I've been really impressed with them. They're, they're really impressive rods. Full cork handle, as you can tell. This is not a glass rod, so any of you purists out there that are looking for a glass rod, this isn't your rod. This is more my style rod where it's got that, they call it a moderate flex, but it is graphite and it feels that way. It comes in at 4.8 ounces. It is a medium heavy power, but it definitely feels pretty stout. It feels a lot stouter than most of the chatterbait rods I've bent previous on the ground. I have not yet bent it on the wall yet. So I'm excited to get over there, bend it on the wall. As far as cos or, uh, componentry on this goes, it is just a, a probably, you know, a, you know, a mid-grade cork handle, but full cork, I like it quite a bit. It's got that traditional Fuji reel seat on it that is extremely comfortable, and still to me, one of the most uh, comfortable reel seats on the market. It's insanely comfortable with just about any reel I've put on them so far. The threads on the foregrip here are exposed a little bit. That's my one knock on it, but for the price of this rod, the action of this thing and the feel and the balance of it is pretty impressive for a moving bait rod. We're gonna go bend it on the wall and see how the Falcon Lowrider 7.3 medium heavy moderate bladed jig rod does. All right, we're here with that 7.3 medium heavy moderate bladed jig rod in the Falcon Lowrider series. I'm gonna load it up here and yeah, that's exactly what you're looking to see. Oh, my drag is tight. It is definitely a mod. I'll tell you this, it it's a lot more moderate action bending it on the wall than it was bending on the floor. It felt a lot faster than this, uh, which is a little bit concerning for every single great bladed jig angler telling me you need a moderate rod for this technique. It is stout enough that you can clear grass off it and it's got a crispness to it that's definitely reminds you the fact that this isn't just a big glass rod, uh, it's a graphite rod. So I think this is right up my alley. I guess that's why I have a soft spot for it. You know, if you're a purist chatterbait angler and you're looking for that really moderate, softer material, this isn't your rod, but tell you what, if you're in the middle on the fence on it, this is certainly a pretty sweet rod. Obviously this rod could do a lot more than fish a bladed jig rod. I think it's got enough backbone and power that it'd be a good open water swim jig kind of rod, like open hook swim bait kind of rod, uh, which we're doing a lot more of these days, as you can imagine. I think I've been trying to find a perfect rod for fishing a spoon, uh, like a, a deep spoon, like almost a jigging spoon out away from the boat, like kind of vertically hopping it back to myself. Uh, this rod would probably be perfect for that. It's got enough power to set the hook far away, but moderate enough that I think your landing percentage is going to improve quite a bit. Cool rod here from Falcon, another contender in our uh, chatterbait wars here we're doing on these videos. If you're looking for a price point rod, a rod that doesn't break the bank but has high performance, definitely check out this Falcon Lowrider bladed jig rod. St. Croix ripping chatter rod. Viewers stated this one a whole bunch, so this was one we should be talking about. This rod is a proprietary blend to make up. Obviously St. Croix manufactures these rods in Park Falls, Wisconsin. So they have their own makeup and materials. They use their SE4 Plus graphite and IAC glass. So this is a composite rod, half glass, half carbon fiber. I don't know what the exact makeup of that is. This should, don't count me on half and half. It's could be 60, 40. I'm not hundred percent sure, but uh, it definitely has a moderate feel when you just bend the rod. I'm excited to bend it on the wall over there. This thing, impressive weight wise, 4.6 ounces. When you look at fiberglass rods, uh, they've been a lot heavier than that. Uh, so pretty lightweight rod here. Uh, with the Legend Tournament rods, you do get that more premium cork on these. You do get a, four, uh, a locking nut on the front that is all aluminum and it does cover, it's very smooth. It's not like a bitey aluminum at all, but it does cover up all those threads, which is really nice. I do like that quite a bit. The unmistakable blue of the Legend Tournament rods. I'm gonna go bend this one here and see what a composite St. Croix rod 
suggested by our viewers, does on the wall. All right, I'm here with that St. Croix Legend Tournament Rip and Chatter Rod, which has been brought up quite a bit to us as should be a rod we bend in our chatterbait discussions. It is lighter weight than a traditional glass rod because it does feature some SE4 carbon fiber, SE4 plus I should say, carbon fiber technology in it as well as their IAC glass. Uh, if you, any of you real detail oriented folks out there watching this, you'll notice I have this sweet little seven fishing reel on here that was sent to me by the, our friends at St. Croix Rods. Thanks for watching the videos and listening. I will bend all the rods with my own personal reels, so don't get offended by what reels are on the rods unless you want to send me one, then I'll put it on the rod for you. Uh, so thank you, St. Croix, for that. So this is, like I said, the Rip and Chatter composite rod. We're going to give it a bend now. And yeah, this thing is exactly the action that you're going for when you're looking for a, for a chatterbait rod. It is a moderate action. It does feel kind of glassy. It does feel fiberglass-like as you load it up. I'm going to give it a little bit of a hook set here. Hold on. Let me make sure I get the drag tight on this. Um, it's definitely exactly what it stated as a moderate action. What's weird is it does feel like a carbon fiber rod down on this end it's in the sense that it's light. I mean, it does feel a lot lighter. It feels way softer when you're just monkeying with just the tip or just playing with the rod a little bit here, uh, like just bending, imparting very little action on the rod. But man, when you give it backbone, it's got a lot more power than you traditionally feel when you load up real hard on a glass rod. What intrigues me about that is if I ever get completely sold on I have to have a glass rod for this technique, I like the fact that this thing feels like it's got a real snappy hard backbone at the back end of all that glass. That if I did want to break it free of some vegetation, I could still get a hard hook set in some fish if I wanted to. Very alive, feeling, very good feeling rod, very high quality feeling rod here from our friends at St. Croix. Back with the Daiwa Zillion. This one was strictly picked because it's new. And a lot of people were asking about it and the employees here all said you're doing chatterbait rods you should do the brand new zillion rod we do sell quite a bit of daiwa here so let's do them their justice and do this one as well obviously the big talk about this one's been the aesthetics of this rod featuring the monocoque handle which is new to the u.s for daiwa daiwa does have monocoque rods over in japan i know that for a fact i've been over there uh but this is their first four-way in the U.S. with uh, monocoque handles. And the aesthetics kind of look similar to the Expiride, so that's been the hot topic. They're totally different price points, and the blank materials are very different. They're very different rods. This one happens to be in the Flex Light family, which previously was reserved for the F Steez family of rods. So I believe the Flex Light family uses some of their Glatec material rolled into carbon like a composite. Uh, I'm not 100% sure on this blank makeup on this particular rod, but it feels more glass-like than the other Flexolite rods I've fished the best. I own an older model Steez Flexolite um, that definitely feels a little different. This feels more like traditional glass. It does feel balanced and it does look pretty with the reel I've got it on, on it here, my own little reel here. Reel seats are beautiful on these. The aesthetics are gorgeous. Uh, it's not a lightweight king by any means. It feels like traditional glass. It came in at 5.8 ounces when we weighed it, but it does feel like a real, true chatterbait rod. So let's go bend it on the wall and see how it does. All right, Zillion Chatterbait Rod. This thing is a 7.3 heavy power regular bend because it's fiberglass. Uh, it is Flexolite, as they'd call it, which I believe is a blended material with carbon and uh, glass. It feels more on the glass side. And it does, weight-wise, as I said, with the weight and the action of it does feel more glassy. Now, here's where I get surprised uh, as I bend it on the floor. This thing's got a lot more power than the other rods so far that I've bent. When they say heavy power, they mean it on this one. When I load it up, it's pulling back a lot harder than the other rods in the, in, that I've compared them to today anyway have been. This truly is a true heavy power. Uh, uh, the other rods that I've bent that are claiming that same power rating are way off from this thing. What's impressive about this one to me is if you're in the camp that you're fishing for money and you need to be using fiberglass rods for that bladed jig presentation for a chatterbait, this one's one that I wouldn't be scared to fish around some grass with or around bigger fish. This has definitely got backbone and power. It almost has a fast tip if you just load it up with just your wrist because that's how stiff and powerful this rod is. Awesome rod maybe for even like your offshore style chatterbaits as well. 
I honestly found myself doing that a lot more the last couple of years is getting out a little deeper, a little further offshore vegetation with a chatterbait, running those three quarters and even an ounce and a quarter at time chatterbaits, the jackhammers. This rod to me screams that because it's got a lot of power. Shocking amount of power for the way it feels. Uh, the tip section is so, is so like soft, like a glass rod should be. I think that's what's going to do all your glass work and then it really shuts off and it's got a ton of power. But as you can see as you load it up, it definitely is fiberglass. It wants to bend all the way back to the handle almost the more you go here, but uh, it's got power. So if you're after a heavy powered chatterbait rod, you need to check out this one. Alpha Angler, the Chatterbound. This, was, uh, this is obviously one we don't sell, but people asked a lot about it. And Kip that works here owns one of these. So here it is. Here's Kip's rod. I'm going to bend it over there on the wall. This is a very interesting one compared to the others. Lengths, about where you'd think a chatterbait rod should be, seven foot, two inches, medium heavy. Okay, common power for a chatterbait rod. But this has got an S-glass tip. Uh, so bending it on the floor, bending with line on it, it feels like it's a lot faster than a traditional chatterbait rod. But let's go see when we actually load it up. It's got me a little nervous about what the action is on this thing because it feels incredible. It really does. It's a very well-built rod, you can tell that. Uh, that these are made very nicely. They're custom made rods and uh, they're not painted. So they do feel light and they did come out light when I weighed it, 4.2 ounces. So this is on the lighter scale of rods that we've found for our chatterbait rod. Let's go bend it on the wall and see how the Alpha Angler Chatterbound does. All right, 4.2 ounce weight winning Alpha Angler Chatterbound rod for the rods we, we bent today anyway. Uh, gonna load it up here and yeah, if you just impart a little action on the rod or a little bit of load up, like if you're trying to clear some grass off it or something like that, you can definitely tell that that tip section is that S-class material that they talk about. So it's kind of got a wildly light tip to it, but similar, I would say mostly to that uh, the zillion rod from Dial. This has got a ton of power to it and it loads up into the way into the backbone, which makes it more, makes sense now why it's called the Chatterbound, right? It does load up and give you that backbone way farther back into the rod, which allows for those strikes next to the boat or those fish to really get it and load that rod up. So it's, it does what you are told a chatterbait rod should do, a little bit more of, a, of tip action to it up there than traditionally you see from certainly a rod with any fiberglass in it. Typically it's the whole top end of that rod's kind of bending where I can kind of impart just a little bit of action at the very tip there. Interesting one here. It's very light, feels alive. It's a nice, it's a very nice rod. I'm a little jealous of Kip on this one, but uh, it definitely still has a moderate uh, a play to it. If, you, if you're fishing any sort of moving baits with treble hooks as well, like bigger top waters or something like that, I would not be scared to use this rod for any of that as well. Really cool rod, Dif it's, it's different. Definitely different feeling than, than some of the other ones. So kudos to them for that. A little bit of, little bit of tip action in this one, but Still a uh, fiberglass, to me, kind of feel to it as far as the action goes with that lightweight feel. So cool rod from Alpha Angler.